So um, we're creating a, a couple of short videos um, as we release firmware updates for our different products. And in today's video, we want to look at, at the latest firmware build for the Kinex Gateway. Um, this build is actually uh, version 1.04, which was released on the 27th of May. I want to start by looking at uh, version 1.03, which was released two months before that, so end of March. 1.03 was, was quite a significant firmware release um, in, in that it introduced a lot of new features to the gateway. Um, some of the most significant features were, were features around string inverters and features around uh, support for multi-cluster. What we mean when we say support for multi-cluster is if you look on the front of the gateway and you look at the XAN bus ports, when we initially released the product, um, we were really recommending that people only use the one port. And that means the one set of connectors, one above the other. And um, that was so you'd connect all your devices on a network to that one port um, to monitor that system. With multi-cluster, we've now fully enabled and, 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 and fully developed all the features to support both ports, so all four connectors, allowing you to connect a lot more Zanbus devices to your network. And, and run much bigger Zanbus uh, networks on the gateway user interface and also on Connect Insight 2. It's very important to note how Zanbus 1 and Zanbus 2 are, are distinguished or defined across these um, four connectors. So Zanbus 1 or Zanbus port number 1 are the two connectors on the, on the left hand side. So one above the other. So if I have my inverters on Zanbus 1 for example, I'll have them all um, daisy chained to each other and I can have the, the last cable from, from one inverter running to, to one of these two um, connectors on port one and have a terminating resistor in the other end. What's very, very important is not to have, um, you know, that kind of setup, but instead of the terminating resistor, the, the other end of the network running across into my second Zanbus port. Because that kind of communication where you're using both Zanbus ports for one network of devices is not supported. If you want to have more devices connected, they must be in their own daisy chain network and then those that second network can connect to the second Zanbus port. With multi-cluster support we've also introduced um, the, the monitoring of some Modbus devices and let's start with the, the uh, string inverters that we're now supporting. So with build 103 we support the CL25 and 36. We also support them in an AC coupled configuration, what an AC coupled system will look like in the user interface of the gateway. So it will actually show how the, the CL is, is on the output side um, of the multi-cluster. We've also introduced support for some power meters. So power meters are required, um, both on the input and output of the multi-cluster side um, for, for larger systems. And the power meters we're supporting are the, the Modbus meters, the PM3255 and the PM800 series meters from Schneider Electric. So those can be you know, sourced through your local Schneider Electric office and then um, you know, put into your customers' uh, uh, multi-cluster systems. We've also introduced a, a new feature in terms of or, or around the configuration page of the, the uh, user interface on the gateway. Now, in the past, um, you were able to refresh your configuration page and we don't mean the refresh up in the, in the browser window. We actually mean within the page, there's a refresh um, uh, icon. And what this would do is it would go and pull all the latest settings from all the Zanbus devices connected to your gateway. Now, why this is important is if you're working on the gateway and someone else is, for example, configuring your system with an SCP, they may make changes to certain settings and you don't see those immediately on the, the user interface. And you'd have to hit this refresh button to see those, those changes. In the past, this refresh process would take place behind the scenes and you'd have no idea when, when it's really um, updated. So we've added a status progress or a progress uh, tracking bar um, that shows you the status of your, of your data fetch, right? So the, the fetching of the data from your different devices and shows you when you've got all the latest um, uh, settings data um, loaded into your, your configuration screen. We've fixed a number of other issues um, in, in, around cloud connectivity. Um, we've added some, some more support around XW Pro grid codes um, like Rule 21. Right, so that's 103, a lot of functionality. Moving forward to 104, it's a lot less complicated. 
the the major change or the biggest change on 104 is that we've added support for the cl60 so um, with 104 you can now literally go and monitor 25 36 or 60 any of our string inverters um, power meters multi-cluster and all the multi-unit and, and single unit systems um, as were supported with the previous builds. There have also been a number of other smaller um, you know, bug fixes and, and changes to the user interface, etc. But I'll let you pull up the release notes in the latest firmware file and you can read through those. And if you have any questions, you can reach out to us. Thank you.